In this video today, we're going to be learning about how to write trig ratios. So first, what is trigonometry? Trigonometry deals with the comparison or ratios of sides and angles within triangles. And in this video, we're going to primarily examine trigonometry with right triangles. And just a note, you'll see in this video the Greek symbol theta. Um, that theta symbol is often used as a variable for angles. So there are three main trig functions that we are going to be learning about, and they are called sine, cosine, and tangent. So let's talk about what each one represents. So sine, and I'll talk about what this SOH means in just a moment. When comparing the opposite and hypotenuse sides in regards to theta, this is called sine. So sine starts with the letter S. We're talking about opposite, which starts with O, and hypotenuse, that starts with H, and that's how we're getting this little acronym we're going to use, so SOH. So let's just talk about what that means. If we look at this right triangle here, I'm going to zoom in a bit. You might already know the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the side in a right triangle that is opposite or across from the right angle. And then there's two other sides that are left over. Those are called the legs of the right triangle. The one that is across from theta is called the opposite side. Okay, so opposite meaning across from. So here's our theta symbol, the side across from it. Okay, you'll see in a second what the other side is called. But when we're talking about comparing the opposite side to the hypotenuse, we just call that sine. All right, let's look at the next one. The next one is cosine. That's when you compare the adjacent and hypotenuse sides in regards to theta. This is called cosine. So again, we know the hypotenuse. And adjacent means next to, so the side that is next to theta. You might say to yourself, wait a minute, there are two sides that are next to theta, right? There's this one and this one. That's true. They are both next to it, but one of them is also the hypotenuse. So I usually label the hypotenuse first, get that out of the way, and then the leftover side that's next to it is called the adjacent side. If we look at our shortcut letters here, we have C for cosine, A for adjacent, H for hypotenuse, and that's this K. All right, last tangent, when comparing the opposite and adjacent sides in regards to theta, this is called tangent. So here's our opposite side. We established that before. That means across from. And here's our adjacent side. So let's talk about that acronym TOA. Tangent starts with T. Opposite starts with O. Adjacent starts with A, and that's where we get to. So let's put this all together. So together, these rules form the acronym SOCATOA. And we're going to use this acronym to help us remember how to write trig equations. So the sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. That's the SO part. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. These are basically our three formulas or rules that we're going to be using in trigonometry. So let's take a look at some sample questions. Okay. In number one, we're asked to find the sine of theta, cosine theta, and tangent theta. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my picture and I'm going to label the sides. So the side with the five is definitely the hypotenuse. And then look where theta is. The side across from it, that's the opposite side. Okay, the side that's next to it is the adjacent side. If you don't want to write the whole word out, you could put A for adjacent, O for opposite, and H for hypotenuse. In the rest of the questions, that's how I'm going to be doing it. All right, well, let's use our formulas. We know sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. If you forgot that, just take a look here. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite is 4, the hypotenuse is 5, and so sine of theta is 4 over 5. It's as simple as just writing the trig ratio. We're not solving for anything. We're just plugging into that rule, that formula, to get used to it. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so 3 over 5. And 
then tangent is opposite over adjacent, so 4 over 3. Okay, and we have completed number 1. All right, number 2. We're going to find the sine of A, cosine A, and tangent A. So we don't have theta in this problem, but we're going to use angle A over here as our reference. The hypotenuse is side AB, the one with the radical 34. So I'm going to label that H for hypotenuse. The opposite side is the one with the 5. And the adjacent side is the one with the 3, the one that's next to angle A. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite is 5. The hypotenuse is radical 34. Cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent, opposite over adjacent, so 5 over 3. Okay, number 3. Find sine of theta, cosine theta, tangent theta. You might notice in this problem there's one little difference, which is that one of the legs is blank, right? And we are going to need that leg. So you might recognize this as a Pythagorean triple here, but let's say that you don't. Let's just call this side B for a moment. I can use Pythagorean theorem to solve for the length of that side. And I'm going to get that that length of that side is 8. So I'm going to say that that side has a length of 8. All right, now let's go in and label our sides opposite adjacent hypotenuse. 10 is our hypotenuse side. The 6 is the opposite. And the 8 is our adjacent side length. So sine of theta opposite over hypotenuse, 6 over 10. And generally, we're going to reduce these, so I'm going to make that 3 over 5. Cosine of theta is 8 over 10. Reduce that. I get 4 over 5. And tangent of theta would be 6 over 8, or 3 fourths. If you were not sure what I was talking about before about a Pythagorean triple, let me just mention that here, that 3, 4, 5 is a really common set of side lengths for right triangles. And basically, if I double all of those numbers, I get 6, 8, 10. So since this problem had a leg of 6 and a hypotenuse of 10, I can see that missing side is 8. Okay. So that will work on some questions. But if we look at number 4, this is not a question where we could use um, Pythagorean triples. We just have to do Pythagorean theorem here. So I'm looking for C, the hypotenuse. So 3 squared plus 6 squared equals C squared. I'm going to get 45 equals C squared, or C is radical 45. All right, let's label our sides. This side with the 3 is our opposite. The adjacent is the 6 side, and the hypotenuse is what we solved for, radical 45. All right, sine of x is 3 over radical 45. Cosine of x, 6 over radical 45. Remember, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent opposite over adjacent is 3 over 6, which I could reduce to 1 half. All right, for question 5, our last question today, it says the trig ratios of congruent angles are equal. Okay, so think about that for a second. If you have two angles that are equal, their trig ratios, sine, cosine, tangent, are equal. In the diagram below, the measure of angle F is equal to the measure of angle I. Okay, so I know angles F and I are equal to one another. That tells me that their trig ratios should also be equal. So it says, which ratio is always equivalent to sine of F? Well, sine of f would be the opposite, okay? So here's the opposite, gh over the hypotenuse, fg. But if I look at my answer choices here, I don't have that as an answer choice, okay? So notice that is not an answer choice. It is correct, but it's just not one of our choices. So we have to find another possibility. So the sine of f is going to be equal to the sine of i, since those are congruent angles. So if I find the sine of I, 
The side opposite I is JH. The hypotenuse of that triangle is JI. And now I have successfully found a correct answer. So the answer to this question would be A. This is basically the toughest question you could really see when just writing trig ratios without solving for really anything, but just writing the actual ratio itself. So if we notice the progression on this page, one and two, really simple. We had all of our side lengths. So we just kind of plugged into the formula. Three and four, we had to do Pythagorean theorem to find a missing side and then go and plug into the formula. And for five, we had this extra connection we had to make here, which was that the trig ratios of congruent angles are equal. So we had to use the idea that if F and I are equal, sine of F and sine of I are equal to one another. In the rest of the videos in this playlist, you can learn more about right triangle trigonometry. Thanks for watching.